It all started when this old money rich ass British couple wanted a son to continue the bloodline and the money. Except Jerlipop didn't birth a son but two girls, Emily and Emily. In representation during this part the parents keep saying he hoping it's a boy. So our little sexist couple didn't know what to do with these two girls and gave the spotlight to Emily who was born 7 seconds earlier. The problem is that she was the manic pixie emo anarchist rebel dream girl who was curious and wanted to see the world. Her parents thought she'd mature when she got older and settled down like the misogynists they are. Because god forbid a woman goes outside and is curious. Instead of submissive and willing to go with harmful gender norms. At every opportunity Emily tried to turn down her duties as the one the parents gave all the responsibility to. Emily was the quiet people pleaser who didn't want to make her parents mad. So she stayed inside and did what she was told in hopes that she'd get their attention. She tried to be perfect to live up to their standards. Unlike Emily who in fact did not grow out of her rebel phase. Because it wasn't a phase. But they didn't know that just yet. So they let her study in Paris where she met Gabriel Agrest or rather, Gabby Grisset. They fell in love and Emily gave up her titles and the money for him. Her parents were fucking furious that she disappointed them but fear not. There's another daughter you can replace her with. She was the obedient one this whole time after all. Perfect victim for a forced marriage with a heartless billionaire who's probably a war criminal. He and her parents wanted her to have a child so they can keep being rich. Cold. I consent. Emily's mother, I consent. Emily's father, I consent. Is there someone you forgot to ask? Anyways she couldn't have children and neither could Emily so Emily and Gabriel used the peacock miraculous to make a son. Billionaire husband was mad as hell and Emily felt bad for her sister who still couldn't have a child so Gabby gave her husband the peacock miraculous and boom they had a child too. Fast forward the children are alive and Gabriel is a happy man but Colt is not. He wasn't told about the consequences and didn't know they were death. Yay. So he saw the baby as a little monster. Satan's creation. Not too far off actually he is Satan himself. Actually no I take that back that's an insult to Satan. Since he didn't see his son as human he didn't treat him like one either and he'd use his amok to make him do shit. Do we wanna know what things in detail? I'm scared to know. But this implies freaky shit way past the sit. Stay. Lie down. Pass me that type of orders shown in the play. It's not mentioned what Amelie went though all this time until he died but since this man agreed with these misogynistic ugly fads you can assume how he treated his wife too. Also this scene. Oh I hope he didn't blame her for not being able to have kids. Like oh you woman you're not even useful for that. Cold fathom equals misogynist you'll see the vision. That's so in character for him honestly. I won't get too much into detail about what he did to his son because this is about the twins. Emily meanwhile was having fun in her last moments with her son and didn't blame Adrian or see him as a monster. Wonder how this will age when season 6 comes out. You'll remember the Emily true villain of miraculous theories? You just had to be there. I bet they feel silly now. I knew my flower midsummer queen wasn't evil. Just emo and a hashtag rebel. A little bit of edge for the teen vogue party. Back to their story. They have their kids. They see each other occasionally since they live in different countries. Emily and Colt die and we're at the present. Now all that's left for Emily is her son and this son of a cunt who refuses to show any compassion or interest. So technically only her son who she has no choice but to raise and support herself. I already made a video about this scene in emotion that I think is really important. Y'all should go watch it as I break down what that means for her. And Emily is dead slash in a coma in the basement surrounded by flowers and butterflies. She has no damn clue her loving husband is doing everything she begged him not to for the sake of she deserved more than she wanted. Or maybe don't disrespect her like that and do what she wanted you to if you truly love her. We all have dead people shut the hell up. At least he doesn't outright blame his son for her death. Unlike this cunt. Emily always had the pattern of running away from her aristocratic lady responsibilities and it's funny how the parents never suspected that letting her study abroad would mean never seeing her again. Like oh we did nothing wrong why is she leaving us? And that was obviously an opportunity for her to cut them off permanently. I don't think she expected them to support her either, since they always thought of her quote unquote rebelliousness as a phase. The fact that she left her entire family and everything connected with them to be with Gabriel, somebody who I have no idea what she saw in, speaks volumes about how much she didn't love them and wanted to break free from them. 
My theory is that since they always restrained her and her sister Emily was never really familiar with dudes and didn't see many people either just like Adrian was isolated so the first dude she locked eyes with even if he was the ugliest mother. Fucker alive she fell in love. Or maybe she didn't fall in love and did go with the opportunist route since he liked her. Thank god I have someone to keep me here so I don't have to go back to these fads. So Emily's out of the picture, and Emily is the only heiress left in that same toxic environment. She's forced to marry an unlovable abusive hoe without any support. Which begs the question was she at least friends with Natalie? Or anyone? Because if she wasn't and she was just stuck with that man I'm so fucking sorry. Like she's probably insane now after that. The way Felix hugged Emily after she vented about feeling neglected made my heart break like. She was always neglected until her sister left. And now she's neglected again. At the end of the day it's always him for her and she for him. The relationship they have is one of the most beautiful in the plethora of horrible family dynamics in this show. Refreshing yes. And I had to make a call back to this from emotion because I wanted to talk about this more and it ties into Amelie's backstory too. There is always a choice. This hits harder when you realize she was forced into marrying an abusive asshole and had to deal with it until he died. There is so much tension here like they are closer than we thought. She felt comfortable to talk briefly with Natalie and even give advice. Natalie listened to what she said and that made her feel guilty as hell because she knows she's right. Their situations are like a parallel and a big contrast at the same time. Her words hit Natalie like a truck but it's too late to choose anything else other than stick with this pest and witness his demise for the sake of another child. Not knowing how it's going to end. And by what she keeps saying to Gabriel. She's not positive he'll save either of them because she knows he's incompetent. And she's closer to her deathbed than he is so she can't do anything physically. But remember that unlike Amelie she did this to herself. Natalie had the choice to live but chose not to. Knowing damn well the consequences. She'd seen this movie before. But Amelie doesn't know any of that when she reminds Natalie that there's always a choice. The advice she gives her. There is always a choice with the context from representation is something she wishes someone told her younger self. But she didn't have the freedom to choose. She just did what she was told and now she's witnessing Natalie somehow ending up with these robot legs after living with Gabriel. That's why she can't tolerate any of what Natalie seems to be going through still on Gabriel's side. Seeing that she's still standing with him. It's clear that he's become her only acquaintance ever at this point and she barely interacts with anyone else. From what we've seen of Natalie this is what I gather and the only conclusion I can come to. We've never heard of Natalie's family at all and since she never stops working I have to assume she hasn't seen them in ages. She threw her entire life away for Gabriel and Amelie hasn't even scratched the surface of what Natalie is going through in that mansion. She has no clue. But even with that ignorance Natalie's suffering is still evident enough for her to point out. The results of that suffering are visible. She could have not had that visible evidence if she respected herself enough back then. In the season 2 finale. Fuck Gabriel and move on with her life and Adrian. That would have been the best possible outcome for everyone. The fact that Amelie's father forced her to marry a man she didn't want and was obsessed with the idea of having a boy as his grandchild cause he couldn't have one as a son 100% proves my point that he is a misogynist. So no wonder Emily caught on to the toxicity of this family and always tried to leave her while Amelie stayed behind always trying to please her family in hopes that they'd be happy. Unfortunately a victim of misogyny who could never escape it. Even when she got married and lived with her cunt ass husband she was still living with a misogynist abusive freak. Like she has never not lived in a toxic environment it's actually sad. Since I made it clear that their parents were ugly toxic sexist flops I need to point out the twins different trauma responses. Amelie always tried to be perfect and did whatever she was told. Even went as far as marrying an abusive ugly man she never wanted because she knew her parents weren't happy that she wasn't the male heir they wanted. She knows she'd have it so much easier if she was but has accepted that this is her fate. She doesn't try to fight back or object. Because nobody told her this isn't normal. She undoubtedly had the worst fate out of the two. She grew up in the shadow of her sister. She did everything her parents told her partly because she wanted to be noticed and you fucking bet these old boomer British fucks were really abusive. Emily managed to escape but Emily stuck with it for the rest of her life. Is she in contact with them now? Probably not. Who knows. We saw her snapping at Gabby but I wanna see her snapping at her flop ass parents.
As for Emily, she really tried to run away from these motherfuckers just to feel a bit of freedom. That alone says a lot about them. Even though she escaped them, Emily's life probably didn't go as she wanted either. She found a friend in Natalie. Her life turned around the second she touched the peacock miraculous and then nothing was the same again. Her dying wish was Natalie taking care of Adrian like a mother and Gabriel to move on and also take care of Adrian. Not only did they not respect her wishes but did exactly what she didn't want them to do. They both betrayed her. In earlier seasons Natalie and Gabriel were really tense and it kinda makes sense after what happened to Emily like I get it fresh grief. But considering they'd been friends for apparently decades tells me Natalie could have knocked some fucking sense into him before it was too late. Even if it made everything go to shit. How much worse could it get? For nearly a whole damn year Gabby was a whole fucking terrorist who laughed maniacally in his secret lair and called the magical creatures including the one that helped Emily create his son his slaves. He called Dusu his fucking slave do you guys understand the level of insanity he'd already reached even in early seasons? Y'all think he's insane now can we talk about him back then? Getting sentimental on a center monster? He didn't even see his child as human. Notice a pattern. He sucked even before Emily died. I don't think he treated Adrian like a human until she died. He probably kept up a cutesy father act for her since she wanted a child so badly and was grateful and happy with the one she had. So yeah. Theories claiming that Emily was the real villain of the show and that Gabriel was just a pawn and that she was a true mastermind are actually crazy. Villain. It's pure comedy that she turned to be the posh British people's anarchist emo daughter. And she's the twin who always wears white. Who would have thought? Conclusion. Emily and Emily are victims of a toxic sexist family and they deserved better. Waste of two beauties honestly. Conclusion number two. Their parents are the true villains of the show.